You and I are living through one of the most exciting periods of automotive history yet. Back in the day, if you wanted a premium performance car, your choice was probably decided by the number of cylinders and litres under the bonnet. But nowadays, you have everything from fully petrol to fully electric cars to choose from on cinch.co.uk. The choice is enormous, yet the gap between those cars is getting smaller and smaller. These two high-performance Audis are perfect examples of the exciting new world we live in. The RS5 Sportback, well, it does things in more traditional ways, while the e-tron GT represents the new world order. At a glance, both of these cinch cars seem like they're poles apart, but delve into the details and you'll quickly see that in these specifications, they're surprisingly closely aligned. Before we get to the nitty gritty, I just wanted to say thanks to those that are subscribed to our new channel. We've big plans for 2022 at Cinch, so make sure you click that sub button to join us for the ride. Right. Back to the specs. This one uses two electric motors powered by a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery located in the floor underneath me. It has 476 horsepower or 530 horsepower Rover Boost and 640 newton meters of torque. Audi claims up to 298 miles of range and that's if you drive it sensibly. And this one has a twin turbocharged V6 engine located under the bonnet. It has 450 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque. And if you drive it relatively sensibly, you should get over 300 miles between fill-ups. Both have clever torque juggling all-wheel drive technology. Both can do 0 to 62 miles per hour in about four seconds. And both can do over 150 miles per hour, where it's safe to do so, of course. Both cars get two digital screens in posh Audi cabins, loads of tech and swish materials to impress your mates. Both cars have rear doors and space for three in the back. And while the e-tron GT is the longer car, it has a saloon boot, whereas the RS5 has a wider opening hatchback boot. While the e-tron GT can come with all wheel steering and air suspension, in standard tune, it gets two wheel steering and adaptive dampers. Although interestingly, both the RS5 and this e-tron GT have an identical 11.6 meter turning circle. And while the RS5 Sportback packs loads of road presence, to me, the e-tron GT is the prettier car. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. I'm not just a fan of this Audi e-tron GT for its looks as well. I'm a fan of it because of the way it drives and the way it makes you feel when you're behind the wheel. It is enormously relaxing. The platform of this car is a J1 platform. It's shared and co-developed with Porsche. Much of the hardware in this car is shared with the Porsche Taycan, but it feels totally different. This is an Audi, very, very clearly, by all measures. I mean, initially you get into it and you just feel like you're in a lovely Grand Tourer. I'm on a racetrack, I'm at Rockingham, but it rides nicely. It glides along and it just wafts along over the bumps and up the crests and just feels really comfortable. And this particular car doesn't have the optional air suspension. So you might think it would be the firmer riding car, but put a wheel on a curb here, smooths them out lovely. It's just a very, very calming and comfortable place to be. But when you press that right pedal, it picks up and goes very, very quickly, which is why even though that RS5 is an RS model, and this obviously isn't the RS model, you can get an RS e-tron GT, but you'll have to spend down near 30 grand more to get to it. Well, even though this isn't an RS model, it's still very, very quick. The performance figures speak for themselves and it feels every bit as fast and elastic as you'd expect. But the differences obviously between an electric and a petrol car are enormous because firstly, the way this thing puts down the power, it's just so smooth and linear, exactly how anyone who's driven an electric car would expect it to feel. But the thing with this e-tron GT versus other electric cars is there's not much drama about it. It's quite calm and always feels like it's deceiving you. You look down at the speedo and you think, whoa, I didn't expect to be going that quickly because everything about it is just so, so good at hiding its speed. But it's still got really good body control. It's still lovely and nicely composed. It has adaptive dampers, even in this non-air spring suspension car. So you can tune it to be a little stiffer. Let's do that actually, just to, to play around. You've got Audi's drive select modes in this as well. And in individual, you can click that adaptive suspension into dynamic mode. And yeah, you can feel it stiffen up straight away. It's, it's slightly, slightly more eager on turning, but there's so much grip and just so much poise. It really is 
a tremendous, tremendous machine. I actually drove one of these back on the launch last year from Inverness down to London. And I really was impressed with the way that the range, the range readout was always very accurate. It was quite easy to actually nail the amount of range you had on the head. If you had 200 miles to go, you could arrive at a destination 100 miles away and have exactly 100 miles showing on your range. So it's very good and very accurate at telling you what you got left. But if you exercise the car, as I kind of am doing now, then obviously the range will come away much faster. But that would be true if you had a big petrol engine car as well, wouldn't it? So it's fair. And I think Audi's tuning of this car, they've deliberately tried to make it much, much less exciting and much, much less extreme than the equivalent Porsches and obviously that RS e-tron. And the result is a car that just impresses you because it never says, I'm a sports car, I'm a fast, fast Grand Tourer, other than obviously on those numbers on the spec sheet. Yet when you drive it and when you move it around on track or when you take it out on the open road and start to exercise those twin motors, then you're like, wow, this thing is really, really competent. The interesting thing as well is it gets the twin speed rear axle electric motor like the Porsche Taycan, which means that at higher speed, it clicks into a second gear that enables it to have that plus 150 mile per hour top speed. And it also means that on a cruise, it's even more settled and even more refined and quiet than other electric cars. It just pulls so nicely, drives so comfortably. The seat is nice and soft and cushioned. The car doesn't move around. You have loads of grip. And if I want to play with the car, you can, amazingly, turn the ESC systems off. And then you can have no stability controller and start to enjoy the car for its dynamic abilities. Bit of power down. It's lovely feels all right it's pretty impressive it does send more torque to the rear but because Audi set this car up to be safe and predictable and typically Audi in that non RS fashion it doesn't start to squirm around and slide you about it just drives you out the corners with loads of grip and loads of dependability now talking of performance the peak power of this model is 530 horsepower so that's What's that? 80 horsepower more than our RS5 has. But it only produces that in overboost. So that's during moments of launch control or when you put your foot down for short bursts. Otherwise, you have a measly 476 horsepower. I mean, it's quick. <laughs> it's quick enough, honestly. Honestly. Oh, that is quick. Yeah, it's a good car. Not bad. Not bad at all. Nice, nice, reliable balance i mean even the braking with the regenerative technology which like many evs you can adjust the aggressiveness on here it's it's very refined very easy to predict i mean if you turn the regenerative tech up and down the car slows down more to pull more energy back into the system or you can run it much more like a conventional automatic even the steering i think much benefits from that co-developed platform with porsche even the steering has some feel not a lot of feel Definitely not as much as the Porsche. Definitely not as much as that, but there's some information. There's probably more information coming through the car itself, the chassis, the floor, the skateboard architecture of an electric car. There's more coming through that than there is through the helm. But I know what's going on. I feel comfortable driving this thing quickly. It's a nice thing and you can munch miles in these. And let's not forget, this is a big car. It's nearly 2.3 tons, but it's nice and slippery. Lots of space in the front and the back. Yeah, it's the full package, isn't it? It's the full electric car package. Okay, so I've jumped out of the laptop and I'm now in a sledgehammer. This is the way of yesterday and today, if the e-tron is the way of tomorrow. And uh, well, initially, or immediately, I'm feeling, well, quite a bit more excited by it because well, it's just, it's an engine, isn't it? The V6 engine in this, the 2.9 litre twin turbocharged six cylinder. Interestingly, also co-developed with Porsche, just like the platform of that e-tron GT. But in this car, having an engine, well, 
immediately I just feel a little bit more engaged, a little bit more excited. But it's not all good news because the mode I'm in now, comfort mode, well, this car just doesn't feel, the RS5 just feels a little bit hesitant, a little bit, almost a little bit sloppy really. And the gearbox, I have a gearbox to use in this car, even though that, that e-tron GT has the two speeds at the back, it just does its thing. Whereas in this car, I have control of the gears. It's a proper, proper semi-automatic gearbox. But in comfort mode, everything's just a bit hesitant. Where, where that e-tron GT just feels so effortless and so elastic with that electric delivery. This is a high performance petrol engine car and yet in comfort mode, it's just really frustrating and really hesitant. If you're driving around town, it's fine. And of course the suspension softens off. This too has adaptive dampers, which soften off nicely and give you a bit more ride comfort. Not as much, I should say, as the e-tron when you're on the move, that car really glides along. This still is a bit fidgety over bumps, but it is definitely acceptably comfortable. But it's the throttle response. It's the, the accelerator pedal, pedal's reactivity or connection with that engine there's just a hesitation that's highlighted so much because of the immediate reaction of the electric powertrain in the e-tron GT. But this is an RS5, an RS model, which means the comfort mode is there because it kind of has to be, but the engineers definitely didn't put that as their priority. What they put as their priority would have been, and if I click the drive select mode here, the dynamic mode which makes the car a lot more dynamic. <laughs> and immediately, oh yeah, this is like it. This is, this is exactly, exactly the sort of stuff you want from your premium Audi, or the sort of stuff I want from my premium Audi. That V6 engine, it replaced the V8 engine, but this, this motor with its twin turbochargers has more urgency from low down not as much as the electric e-tron GT, no. If you're in the four-door market for a premium performance Audi, you're not gonna be able to beat that e-tron GT with a twin turbo V6 RS5 for instantaneous delivery anyway. But for character and mid-corner rotation, I think this car has that one beat. Yep. <laughs> And the reason this car is able to offer more dynamism than that e-tron GT, despite the e-tron having its weight lower in the platform because the battery is obviously on the ground or as close as possible to the ground, this car isn't actually the flatter cornerer. That e-tron GT goes into the bends with less pitch and less roll. I'm actually feeling like I'm in more of a, almost like a muscle car scenario by comparison. I appreciate actual muscle cars are very different as again, but Compared to that e-tron GT, this car just starts to tilt and pitch and roll into the bends. And you can really feel the mass of the car moving around when you start to play with its balance. But crucially, British cars, British specification RS5 Sportbacks come with a standard fit sport differential on the back axle, which means the torque, the power is juggled in a more playful manner when you request it to be which means this car can go into a bend and be made to just start to pitch itself into the bend using the power because of the way those rear wheels are juggling the torque and that power. This is an all-wheel drive car, as is the e-tron GT, of course, but it's an all-wheel drive car in a very different way. It has power coming from one place and being distributed differently further back through the car. Whereas the e-tron GT, of course, puts its power down separately on both axles. It has a motor for the front and a motor for the back. You can also obviously turn off the ESC and the stability controls, which we shall do now just to feel what this car is like with the leash off. Still typically stable in an Audi way. It's not trying to throw me off the circuit, but with that lovely delivery of power and as I said that sport differential at the back and you have the ability in bends like this to throw it in get on the power and just rotate your way in through the bend lovely 
It's definitely, definitely a fun, fun car. I do really like these Audis. I do really like the RS5, but I have to admit that e-tron GT, it's a fantastic all-rounder, isn't it? A fantastic all-rounder, honestly. I think he would have a nicer long distance drive. So long as you can find fast chargers, I think he would have a nicer long distance drive in the e-tron GT. But when you came to that fun and twisty road, the RS5 is where it's at. Oh yeah. But, which one would I have? Well, let's just listen to that engine. Oh, my gearbox is so fast. Brakes are strong. Yeah, I mean, I would struggle not to be an RS fanboy <laughs> if I could afford one of these. Both excellent, excellent cars, fantastic examples of their respective sides of the automotive world. But one comes at you and does its best to excite you with petrol power and all the things we've loved for years. And the other, it just amazes you with how capable, how capable these electric cars can be. Well, hello there. Hello. Be a bit rude not to, wouldn't it? Racetrack, I mean. Come on then, Abhishek. Let's see which one's faster. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's close. That's close. <laughs> so, go on then. Now you've seen both of these cars in action, which will it be? Petrol or electric? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you soon.